Okay, so now we're going to take a little bit of a deeper look into Ableton's Live 5. So let's start with the concept of elastic audio. Um, we've already seen elastic audio show us, give us the ability to change tempo freely from, from uh, any, any given tempo as fast or slow as you want it to be without having to change pitch or timer. And that's important because that gives you much more flexibility. Um, but but let's, let's talk a little bit more about what elastic audio can actually do to these individual clips. So I'm going to stop all the audio here. And from my browser section, I'm going to go ahead and, and look for um, uh, a little bit of a drum loop to, to get us going here. Something like this here I think might work. Yeah, that'll, that'll do the trick. So I'm just going to drag that from the browser into a, um, into a slot here on an audio track. We'll solo this track. So now, that clip's going to play. And I'm just going to double click on it so we can take a closer look at what's happening here. Okay. Now as I double click on it, we get this multi-display show us some specifics about our, about our loop. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I want to point out a few, a few things that's, that are happening here. Here's our warp settings and it tells us that the original tempo of this loop is 140 BPM. So just note that we're playing at 121 BPM right now. Let's just, let's bump it up to 140 so we hear what the loop sounds like in its sort of most natural state. And that's what it is, okay? So now, I may decide that I want to change this, okay? I may decide that um, I, do no long, I don't want count two to fall here, right? Here's bars and beats across the top. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, but I may decide I don't want count two to fall here anymore. Instead, I want count two to fall here. And I'm going to turn the metronome on so I can point something out. Okay, what I want you to notice is we're still in perfect time. One, two, three, four. You'll see it's still in time, but what's actually happening is live is rushing through this section and then slowing way down to stay in tempo with whatever it was that we defined it to be. Now, this is a pretty drastic change here. Uh, and you hear the sound that we're creating out of it. That might actually be useful. Some of you may be thinking this sounds horrible, but uh, that might actually be useful. That's a great tool for, for really mangling audio and doing something uh, maybe a little bit more experimental. But let's, let's do uh, something more subtle to this loop. Now, you'll notice that this, this particular hit here, I think it's a, a hi-hat, is a little bit ahead of the beat, which might be fine, but uh, I'm going to just nudge it over a little bit so it's right on the beat. Okay? And then you, the same thing is going on here. We're a little bit ahead of the beat. Again, that, that could be fine. That could be a good thing that you want in the, in the production, but maybe for the particular project you're working on, it isn't. So now I can go through and really get them perfectly in time. Okay. Or if you have a project that uh, has a little bit of a swing to it, and uh, this, the loop you have is a little bit too square, you can swing it instead and nudge it so that it's a little bit off. The choice is up to you and that's the point of Elastic Audio. The other thing that Elastic Audio lets you do is swing our audio. So I'm going to stop this clip. I'm going to go back to the demo song that we were listening to before. We'll start with the, uh, with the verse here. Okay. So we were at about 129 BPM. We'll go back there. And then I want to point out this little feature here. It's a, it's a, letter, a number zero right now. I'm going to just raise that up to 99. And we should have changed that thing. Didn't, but we can make that change. It'll happen real quick. All right. So, there we go. It's starting to happen. What I'm doing is I'm assigning each of these clips to have a groove so that they swing around the eighth note. So, on my drum track, you'll see right here, I can have it swing around the eighth note. Now, I'm going to make that change once more again for you. So we'll start with zero, and then we head up to 99. So you're thinking, well great, what's so exciting about this? I can swing on any drum machine since the 80s, right? But what's unique about what's happening here is that not only are we doing it to a MIDI sequence, like this bass and these drums, but we're also swinging audio, most notably with perhaps this road section. 
and I'll go back to zero so you can hear how it sounds straight. Okay? That's something that's pretty unique and pretty powerful because now you don't, if, if you've already have some pre-recorded audio, it's not stuck into whatever that was pre-recorded. You can make it uh, fit into however your project is supposed to be. All right, so now, those are some of the, the fundamentals of elastic audio, but there's also things I can do like change pitch. So maybe with this road section, we might transpose that down an octave or up, up an octave or maybe a little bit less drastic and only go a few semitones back and forth. And all these things, you can assign that to a MIDI controller as well. Um, those are some of the concepts that you get, some of the benefits that you get out of Live's Elastic Audio.